boots and um, so they landed in this uh, little airplane uh, by the river someplace far far north they started to hunt and then they got the big animal the moose they uh, packed it of course and waiting for the airplane the airplane came and the pilot came out it was a Cessna for about probably four people only and he looked at this meat and he looked at these two husky guys and he said, guys, you cannot pack this thing in, you know, that I cannot lift the airplane with it, it's too heavy. And they said, what kind of pilot are you? Last year we had the same thing and we had the pilot and he took everything and he took off. Did he? Yes, of course. Let me try. So they packed everything up and so on. And he put the engine very high and after a while shaking the airplane is taking off, so they are patting him on the back and they are like this. You see, they said, you are a great pilot. And after a while, the engine suddenly started to choke and then shaking, they landed up in the bushes there. And the pilot is still unconscious, but these two guy, the guy got, guys got out and one says to the other, hey Frank, where are we? And he looked around and he said, well, I'm not completely sure, but not much farther than the last year. <laughs> that's, that's to me, it's the spirit of our new chancellor. He never gives up, he gives up, goes forward. <laughs> and, and concerning the faith, which we celebrate here with the seminary and the great vision of Founding Father uh, Dombrowski, it reminds me again the story about our great, uh, great Pope, greatest probably in the last times, uh, John Paul II, because when he was elected the Pope, you know, the Cardinals are approaching the newly elected Pope, they kneel down and they uh, give an homage to, to the new Pope. And at one moment came the Cardinal from Ireland and he said, uh, Your Holiness, I'm a Cardinal from Ireland. And please remember that in the sixth century, Ireland sent missionaries to Poland. And John Paul II said, I know, I know, they went there to regain their faith. <laughs> <laughs> Polish uh, faith presence in, in any country in the world, I think, and John Paul II is a symbol of that, is inspiring the people to to fidelity, to faith, and to our God. So the new chancellor and um, representing our dear old country, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Piotr Pilczyk is uh, inspiring us here with this great heritage we all have, with the Polish indomitable, unconquerable ever spirit and this spirit is inspiring to all the people around the world in a variety of ways. And great President of the United States, Jefferson, I think is symbolic when he experienced this spirit in the service of Tadeusz Kościuszko, the Polish American general. When Tadeusz Kościuszko decided to give all his possessions granted to him by American Cong Congress for education and emancipation and freedom of the black African American Americans here, the slaves at the time. Jefferson was so impressed that he said, This is the purest son of liberty. This is the purest son of liberty. So Poland, with the spirit, contributed to this great country in an enormous way. And I think that spirit is constantly needed in this country because, as we know, there is a lot of dangers, if I may. Here's one more remark from my own experience. Years back, I was commissioned as a Navy officer, a job for the Navy, American Navy, and undergoing the oath of officers. I noticed that the words of that oath for the officers goes like this, that you will be defending American Constitution and America against foreign, and domestic enemies, foreign and domestic enemies. Sometimes I wonder whether those foreign are more dangerous for us or the domestic ones. 
because the ideologies we are facing right now in this country, in this country are ero eroding the very fabric and the very foundation of the great spirit of America. So we all need to stand on guard and against the satanic attempts to destroy especially the human family and the dignity of woman as mother. Atheistic family feminism is extremely destructive to the family life. Once I was asked how is the role of women in Poland because those proposing this ideology, feministic atheism, they accuse sometimes Poland that is backwards, that the women are oppressed and so on and so on. So I had to quote to them a dialogue between husband and wife in Poland. Husband one morning says to his wife, dear, you are talking to me like to an idiot. And she said, well, I want you to understand. <laughs> so we need to revive the spirit of a proper, good, loving, respectful relationship in the family and in the family life in this country and everywhere. Poland has a lot to offer in an inspiring way, in the great vision for the country, for the individual, for the family life, and also for the life of the church. So we are grateful to God, to our new chancellor, presenting this vision with such an enthusiasm. Of course, without God's help, we cannot go forward. So let us pray together from the heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And to the Queen of Poland, Hail Mary, full of grace. Amen. May, may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us remain God's peace. Thank you.